Hi friends, I am Dr. Sakshi Arora Hans and uh, you all know me as the Ops and Gynae faculty and uh, you also know me as the author for Self-Assessment and Review of Obstetrics, Self-Assessment and Review of Gynecology and Self-Assessment and Review of ENT. Now what you don't know is that recently I have also become the medical director for a nursing app and that is the Nursing Next app, right? So, um, from after a lot of requests from my uh, students that I should start my YouTube channel, finally, I am starting this uh, YouTube channel to help the students of PG entrance, that is NEAT, then FMG students and nursing students. Now, are you thinking that I am going to cover entire OBS and Gynae in this channel? No, please, I am not going to do that. I am just going to tell you some important questions or maybe a recent question or any controversial question I'm going to discuss on this uh, channel or if there is any update, that update I'll give you through this channel, right? But if you want to watch my complete video lectures, then uh, PG entrance and FMG students, you will have to go to Maro and you will have to purchase the Maro app and nursing students, uh, you will have to purchase the nursing next app and uh, very shortly, I'm going to release my individual uh, the app on midwifery and nursing through nursing next, right? Okay, now since uh, in this channel, I am going to cater to a large number of audience. That is why before I start any video, I'm going to tell specifically that this video is meant for which category of students. For example, today I am going to discuss a question which came very recently in AIMS and that question was on SLE in pregnancy. Now, this video is specifically for PG entrance. So, any FMGE student or any nursing student who is watching this video, you shouldn't watch it. For you, I'll be posting some other video later on, right? So, all PG entrance students, all the NEET uh, students, all the students who are about to give their NEET exam, all students who are going to appear for AIMS or for DNB, be ready. Take a copy, take a pen and start copying and understanding SLE in pregnancy. But before I start uh, talking about SLE in pregnancy, let's have a look at the question which came on SLE in AIMS May 2019. So here we have the question. The question says, a pregnant lady is suffering from SLE. Which of the following autoantibodies would be responsible if her child has congenital heart block? Option A, anti-SM antibody. Now, anti-SM is the anti-Smith antibody. Option B, anti-double-stranded DNA antibody. Option C is anti-phospholipid antibody. And option D is anti-Rho antibody. Now, in order to uh, you know, answer this question, you will have to have some knowledge about SLE in pregnancy, right? So, let's start talking about SLE in pregnancy. Now, you all know that SLE, it's an autoimmune disorder, right, where a person's immune system becomes overactive. And what happens in SLE is that the B lymphocytes become overactive and they start producing a large number of autoantibodies. That's the basic problem which is happening in SLE. So now question comes that what are the antibodies which are being produced in a patient of SLE, right? So in order to remember them, you will have to draw a diagram in which you are going to draw a cell. In the cell, you are going to draw a nucleus and you all know that in nucleus, we always have DNA. So, you are going to draw DNA, right? So, the first antibody which is found in a patient of SLE, that is anti-nuclear antibody, right? Number one is anti-nuclear antibody. Now about anti-nuclear antibody, what you have to remember is that this is the screening test for SLE, right? That's number one point which you have to remember. Second point which you have to remember about anti-nuclear antibody is that these are the antibodies which are found in major amounts in a patient of SLE. So this is the major antibody which is present and it's present in abundance, right? So suppose if uh, you are suspecting SLE in a patient and you get her anti-nuclear antibody test as negative. 
you get the test repeated and if it comes negative for a second time then you can be sure that this patient doesn't have SLE right now within the nucleus we know that DNA is present so the second type of antibody which is found in a patient of SLE is anti double stranded DNA antibody right now details about this antibody we'll talk about first let's enlist all the antibodies which are present in a patient of SLE number three we all know that ribonucleus proteins are also present in uh, the nucleus right so the third kind of antibody is anti-ribonuclear protein antibody or RNP antibody right number four type of antibody which is present in SLE is anti-histone antibody anti-histone antibody right now cell uh, membrane you know have got phospholipids so the fifth kind of antibody which is present in a patient of SLE is anti-phospholipid antibody anti-phospholipid antibody right so these are five kind of antibodies which are present in a patient of SLE apart from these antibodies you also get certain named antibodies which are present in a patient of SLE so the sixth kind of antibody which is present in SLE is anti-Smith antibody write it carefully seventh kind of antibody is anti rho antibody r o rho antibody which is also called as capital s s a antibody right the eighth kind of antibody which is present in a patient of sle is anti la antibody which is also called as s s b antibody right and the ninth kind of antibody which is present in an SLE patient is anti-erythrocyte antibody, right? So these are the nine antibodies which are present in a patient of SLE. Till now, I have also told you this, that the screening test for SLE in pregnancy is anti-nuclear antibodies, right? That's the screening test. Now, Next very important question is about specificity, right? Which antibody is specific for SLE? Because these antibodies are found in other autoimmune diseases also. So amongst these antibodies, which one is specific for antibody and which one, uh, which one is specific for SLE and which one is not specific for SLE? So for that, you are going to remember a mnemonic SNOR, S-N-O-R, where S is for anti-Smith antibody. And this is the one which is specific for SLE. So if you get a question that the most specific antibody for SLE, and then you are going to answer it as anti-Smith antibody, right? Now, if they ask you which antibodies are not specific for SLE, so NO is no. Which one is not specific? The antibodies whose name begins with the alphabet R. And you all know just now I told you that there are two antibodies whose names are beginning with alphabet R and they are anti-RNP antibody that is the ribonuclear protein antibody and anti rho antibody which is also called as SSA antibody right so this is not specific for SLE right then next question is we have to talk about each and every antibody you know the some details about each and every antibody right so now what I want you to do is I want you to write on one side anti-double-stranded DNA antibody and on the other hand you should write anti-RNP antibody that is ribonuclear protein antibody. Now between these two antibodies you know the question which is asked they will not ask you between these two this is something which I'm telling you how you're going to remember right if they ask you which antibody is associated with rheumatic syndrome so R for rheumatic and R for ribonucleoprotein. 
So ribo anti ribonucleic protein antibody is associated with rheumatic syndrome. Or the question could be that in a patient of rheumatic syndrome, which is the most common antibody which is found? And then again, your answer will be anti RNP antibody. Now, whatever I'm telling you, this I am telling you from Williams, the latest edition of Williams, right? Then. Next question can be anti-double-stranded DNA antibody. If you are finding this in an SLE patient, in a pregnant SLE patient, what does that signify? So if I have a patient who has SLE, she's pregnant and I am finding anti-double-stranded DNA antibody, what does this signify? This signifies that the patient has increased chances of nephritis. Nephritis. See, I have to write uh, while I am teaching. So, my handwriting as it is is poor and it's coming really bad, right? So, nephritis and vasculitis. Clear? So, this is anti-double-stranded DNA antibody, which if it is present, it signifies that there are increased chances of nephritis or there are increased chances of vasculitis. Then comes antihistone antibody. Antihistone antibody. Now, about antihistone antibody, what you have to remember is HD antihistone antibody. We know high definition HD. So, H and D. D stands for drug induced lupus. So, in a drug-induced lupus, you are going to get antihistone antibody. Now, another very important question here is, which you must have read in your pharmacology classes also, that what are the drugs which lead to, uh, which are the drugs which can lead to SLE? So, what are the drugs leading to drug-induced lupus, right? So, drug-induced lupus, it is caused basically by Five drugs which you have to remember. The mnemonic for these drugs is H I triple P hip, right? Where H stands for hydralazine, I for isoniazid, P for pyrazinamide, P is also for penicillamine, and for procainamide. Right? So, these are the drugs which lead to drug-induced lupus. Right? Then, you have anti-Rho antibodies and you have anti-La antibodies. Remember that anti-Rho and anti-La antibodies mostly are found together. So, whatever I am going to tell you is going to be, with, uh, you know, it is going to be relevant for both these antibodies. Right now, both these antibodies, whenever they are found in a patient of SLE, they, it signifies that there are increased chances of number one, cutaneous lupus syndrome. Right, so there is increased chances of cutaneous lupus syndrome. Number one, number two. It, ha it is associated with increased chances of Sjogren's syndrome. So, in a patient of Sjogren's syndrome, you will get anti-Rho and anti-La antibodies. Number three, if in a pregnant SLE patient, you are getting anti-Rho or anti-La antibodies, you should always do a thorough fetal surveillance because there are increased chances of congenital heart block in the fetus with these two antibodies. Very, very important point, right? So, they are associated with increased chances of congenital heart block. So much so that when I will be talking about congenital heart block, I will be telling you that congenital heart block is seen specifically in a pregnant SLE patient when anti-Rho or anti-La antibodies are present, right? And number four, anti-Rho and anti-La antibodies, they are associated with increased chances of stillbirth. 
So these are four things which are associated with anti-Rho and anti-La antibodies. Number one, these antibodies are found more in patients who have cutaneous lupus syndrome. Number two, they are found more in uh, Sjogren's syndrome. Number three, if uh, anti-Rho and anti-La antibodies are present in an SLE patient, right, in a pregnant SLE patient, then you should suspect congenital heart blocks in the fetus and it is also associated with increased chances of unexplained stillbirth. Now, one very important thing is that whenever anti-Rho or anti-La antibodies are present, then there are decreased incidence, there is decreased incidence of one thing and what is that one thing? There is decreased incidence of nephritis. Nephritis. So the chances of nephritis are increased with which antibody? The chances of nephritis were increased with anti-double-stranded DNA antibody. If it was present, then the chances of nephritis are increased. But if anti-Rho or anti-La antibodies are present, then the chances of nephritis in the patient are decreased. Right? Now let's talk about two other antibodies and they are anti-erythrocyte antibody and anti-phospholipid antibody. Everything about anti-phospholipid antibodies, if you have watched my marrow videos or if you have attended my live classes, I have told you everything about anti-phospholipid antibody syndrome. Uh, now, maybe, you know, later on, I post a video on anti-phospholipid antibody syndrome here too. But as of now, I'm telling you that in anti-phospholipid antibody syndrome, there are antibodies. The major antibody is lupus anticoagulant and the other one is anti-cardiolipin antibodies. And both these antibodies, they bring about thrombosis in the blood vessels. And because they bring about thrombosis in the blood vessels, that is why they lead to fetal loss right and that fetal loss can be in the form of abortions that can be in the form of stillbirth or that can be in the form of iud apart from this these uh, anti-phospholipid antibodies they are also associated with valvular heart lesions right so this is what you have to remember about anti-phospholipid antibody that they are associated with thrombosis and that can lead to fetal loss and they are associated with valvular heart disease valvular heart disease right now anti-erythrocyte antibody as the name suggests they may lead to i'm not saying they always lead to but they may lead to hemolysis right they may lead to hemolysis and they may also lead to a positive direct Combs test right so this is what you have to remember about anti-erythrocyte antibodies now let's continue SLE further about antibodies you have to remember this much only now, another thing what you have to remember is five very important points on SLE. Now, these five very important points on, on SLE which you have to remember are, number one, 90% patients of SLE are females. So, SLE is much, much common in females than in males. That's number one. Number two, familial inheritance is seen in 10% patients right number three this disease also has a genetic predisposition it is more common in persons if they in, in if they inherit autoimmune gene which is present on chromosome 16 so if a person has inherited the autoimmunity gene which is present on chromosome 16 then the chances of sle are increased another thing which tells us that yes there it has genetic predisposition is that it is much more common the incidence of sle is much more common in monozygotic twins than in dizygotic twins and the 10 year survival rate for sle is 70 to 90 persons so these are five important things which you have to remember on SLE next is how does a patient of SLE present to you right so a patient of SLE is going to complain of fever there will be rash then they will have joint pains that is arthralgias and they will have anemia now along with anemia there may be thrombocytopenia and leukopenia a very important point which you have to remember is that 50% patients of SLE, they have renal involvement, right? 
Now, let's talk about lupus in pregnancy. This was, I was talking about SLE in general here. Now, specific a few important points about SLE during pregnancy or lupus in pregnancy. You have to remember, first very important point is that one third patients of SLE, the worsen during pregnancy. So, SLE will increase in, pers in uh, pregnancy in one third patients. In one third patients, SLE will remain unchanged during pregnancy and in one third patients, SLE will decrease during pregnancy right that's first important point which you have to remember second very important point which you have to remember is that if there is any case of sle which is newly detected during pregnancy right that means it has to be severe so any newly detected case of sle during pregnancy signifies that it is going to be a severe case right third important point is in general the outcome of pregnancy or in SLE is going to be good if two conditions are fulfilled, right? Number one, if the disease was quiescent for six months before conception. So in this category of patients also, the, uh, you know, the disease is going to be, the, the outcome of pregnancy is going to be good, right? Number two, Outcome is also going to be good in a patient who has no anti-phospholipid antibody syndrome or who doesn't have any superimposed PIH or the person doesn't have any nephritis. So if none of these three things are present, then also the pregnancy outcome in an SLE patient will be good. And what are those these three things? Those three things are number one, no anti-phospholipid antibody syndrome, no superimposed PIH and no nephritis right another very important point which you are going to remember is that patients with lupus nephritis they have increased chances of three things during pregnancy and what are those three things they have increased chances of pih right number two they have increased chances of a flare during pregnancy so if an sle patient has nephritis there will be increased chances of pih increased chances of flare and increased chances of renal insufficiency clear so this is what you have to remember about uh, the general points about lupus in pregnancy so now let us see how to manage an sle patient during pregnancy what you have to remember here is that for SLE, we do not have any permanent cure. You have to give symptomatic treatment to the patient and you are going to give to the patient low dose aspirin throughout pregnancy, right? In mild cases, along with low dose aspirin, if the patient is having arthralgia or if the patient is having serositis in that case the drug of choice becomes NSAIDs so in a mild case you are going to give low dose aspirin plus because patient is having joint pain or serositis you are going to give NSAIDs now whenever you are giving NSAIDs in pregnancy you are going to keep two things in mind you should never give NSAIDs for a very long period during pregnancy. So, chronic treatment with NSAIDs should be discouraged. Number two, large intermittent doses of NSAIDs should also not be given. You have to give them low doses. Why I am telling these two things should be avoided is because if you are doing any of these two things, there are increased chances of oligohydramnios and there are increased chances of premature closure of ductus arteriosus, right? Now, this is if the patient is having mild pains or if the patient is having mild SLE. Now, if patient has severe pains or severe SLE, then what am I going to do? Then I am going to come to corticosteroids and the drug of choice in this case is prednisolone right? The dose of prednisolone which you are going to give is 1 to 2 milligrams per kg till the time the acute phase is over. Once the acute phase is over, you are going to bring down the dose to the maintenance dose and that is 10 to 15 milligrams per day, right? Now, corticosteroids or prednisolone, if you are giving in pregnancy, what you have to be careful about is that corticosteroids, they can lead to gestational diabetes during pregnancy right now this is how you manage a severe case now suppose there is a severe case and the patient is not responding to uh, corticosteroids 
right in that case what am i going to give in that case the drug of choice becomes azathioprine so if the patient is resistant to steroids the drug of choice is azathioprine right a very important point which you have to note here is suppose you have an sle patient who was controlled on anti malarials and her sle was controlled on anti malarials and now the patient has conceived in that case remember that hydroxyquinine that is uh, no teratogenic effects of hydroxyquinine have been seen during pregnancy and that is why acog recommends that you should continue the anti malarial on which sle was controlled during pregnancy also right now let's talk about the fetus uh, during uh, in a patient of sle now in a pregnant patient who has sle fetus has to be closely monitored because there are increased chances of complications and what are the complications which are seen in fetus in a patient of sle number 1 there are increased chances of iugr number 2 there are increased chances of oligohydramnios because most of the times you are going to use nsaids during pregnancy and number 3 there are increased chances of neonatal lupus apart from this what you have to remember is sle can lead to preterm labor right but in spite of all these things if you have a patient of sle you have to continue the pregnancy up till term unless and until patient has superimposed pih or there is iugr or there is preterm labor in these conditions you are going to manage the disease like for example if the patient is having pih you will have to manage as you do a manage a patient of pih if the patient develops iugr right sle patient has iugr then the management will be like you manage an iugr pregnancy right clear then the next very important thing what you have to know is about neonatal lupus so i am going to conclude my topic with neonatal lupus now neonatal lupus in neonatal lupus syndrome you get a constellation of symptoms which includes number 1 skin lesions skin lesions is present in 30 to 40% of neonates number 2 systemic involvement and number 3 hematological abnormalities right these three things are present in neonatal lupus occasionally in the neonates you will get congenital heart block but the most common manifestation of neonatal lupus is not congenital heart block you are not going to write that the most common manifestation of neonatal lupus is skin lesions right now let's talk about congenital heart block in a patient of sle right now congenital heart block in which kind of patients of sle it is specific it is specific for those patients who have got ssa or ssb antibody that is anti ro or anti la antibodies right number 2 why congenital heart block occurs congenital heart block occurs because there is myocarditis between the av node and between the bundle of his right number 3 congenital heart block is more common if the patient had a previously affected child so in sle in pregnancy if the chances of congenital heart block normally are 2 to 3% but if a patient has history of a previously affected child that like a previously ch a previous child with congenital heart block then the chances increase manifold times and it becomes 25% remember congenital heart block is permanent in the fetus if the pay mother has sle right and this congenital heart block will require a pacemaker clear the next thing is that if you are getting an sle patient who has anti ro or anti la antibodies in such a fetus because we know that there are increased chances of congenital heart block you are going to do a fetal monitoring fetal cardiac monitoring between 18 to 26 weeks clear so with this background now let us go and see our question the question was says which of the following auto antibodies is responsible if her child has congenital heart block so we know that congenital heart block is seen specifically in anti ro or anti la antibodies so answer here is option d as far as option a is concerned anti smith is the most specific antibody and anti double stranded dna is the one which is used as a screening test for sle 
clear I, I hope this topic is clear to you now you can answer any question on SLE in pregnancy so keep studying stay safe and subscribe to my uh, channel and also ring the bell icon so that you can get all the updates which I am going to send to you and you can watch uh, all the other uh, videos and um, all the best keep studying thank you so much